So on my screen I've got a template file with some starting geometry that we'll be using to complete the tutorial. To access this file for free, just create a profile on our website and you better log in and download the file. So before we get started with tweening, I just want to show an example of one of the many object manipulation tools that's available to um, us in, Fuff in Pufferfish. So I'm just going to firstly come over here and reference in this curve with a curve component right there. We've got that guy in. And what we're first going to use is something called the prude component. So let's go over to the Pufferfish plugin, which is here, and we'll come to our drop down menu. And we just want to grab the prude component, which is prude curve here. And what the prude component does is it tries to just remove all the sharp edges you've got in a piece of geometry. So I just want to basically um, flatten out or curve out these uh, hard edges of this star I've got. So I'm going to drop my curve into the prude curve component. And we don't see much going on straight away. Um, I just want to add a few parameters. So I might add something with a value of about 25 for the length. And that just straight away offsets our component. You can see already it's giving us a nice curved version of our base geometry. Um, we've got a few different blend types, which is how it creates that curvature. So I'm just going to create a slider between 0 and 1. Um, and you can flick that over. I actually kind of like the curvature of number 1, so which was the curvature output, not the tangency. And then for bulge, uh, it's asking for a number between 0 and 1, so uh, let's go 0 is smaller than 0 0.50, which is smaller than 1, and plug that guy into here, and that'll just enable us to control that bulge. I reckon I'll make that 0.75 for now, and I'll preview that guy off, and I might just hide um, that curve geometry there like that. Cool. So we'll group that guy. And we'll call that bulge. Oops. Actually, it would make more sense to call it prude, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and bake that guy because we're going to use him to create our first tweened object. So let's copy this curve upwards because what we're going to do is we're going to tween through three different um, curves here. So I'm actually going to scale this one in a little bit. And I might actually rotate him by 30 degrees as well. Or oh, maybe 25. I'm trying to get him into that middle. I'll just do it manually, actually. Around there, just like that. And I might make him just a little bit smaller. And then this one here, I'm actually going to just rotate a little bit like that. And maybe just pull them out a little bit. So what we're going to try and do is create a blend between these curves using some of the tween curves tool available to us in Pufferfish. So if we come up to our curve tab on here, um, the main tween options are here at the top, and we're going to look at all three. So let's start with tween consecutive curves. I'm going to drop that onto the canvas. I'm going to create a curve component and reference in our curves. So I want to reference these in order from bottom to top. So I'm going to go set multiple curves. I'm going to select the bottom first, the middle, and then the top geometry and hit return. And let's just straight away go ahead and plug that guy into curve. So straight away we'll get something. We're getting um, a couple of objects tweening. So what is it? We're getting two that are being output. I might just create a panel so we can clearly see what that output is there. Um, and the way that it's basically creating where these tweens are happening has to do with our factor. And our factor is currently set to 0 0.5. So what it's doing is it's taking this first curve and this second curve and creating a um, kind of middle morphed version of the two, which is represented at the 0 0.5. So that's our tween factor. Um, if we were to make that, you know, a value of 0, between, um, zero to 1, we could easily... Um, start at zero, and you'll see as we move up to one, it goes to the top curve. So a value of 0 0.5 means that we get a tween in between these two, and then of course it's tweening between the top two as well. But what if we wanted to have multiple uh, curves, so not just one that goes in between them? We could create a range component, which will give us a list of numbers that sit between zero and one, because this base domain just by a starting point is set to 0 and 1. So I could go and create, you know, a number slider that sits between 0 and 100, and I'll plug that into range. Um, 
And what it'll do if I make it 37, for example, is it'll give me a series of um, even numbers all split up uh, that go from 0 to 1. So if I plug that into factor now, you'll see we get uh, a big tween coming through. And what it's doing is it's, so if I have that set, sit uh, set to 30. It's creating 30 between the first two and 30 between the second two. That's specifically for the tween consecutive curves. And because this is parametric, we could go and adjust, you know, these curves in the middle, um, and that'll update quickly for us. So that's kind of a base intro to how this kind of tweening operation works in Pufferfish. Let's have a look at another uh, tween curves. Um, one, let's look at the tween two curves here. So very specifically, it's asking for um, between two curves in particular. I'm just going to preview that guy off. So what I might do is I'll create a list item component, and I'm just going to grab these curves here, and we're just going to get item one and then item two. So these two here, and we'll tween. In fact, actually, let's go between the top two just so we get a full one. So we'll go from curve A to curve B here, and once again, we're getting, you know, um, a 0 0.5 factor by default, like this. Um, so I'll add our old range in so we get more of a tween, um, just like that, okay? What happens if we wanted a little bit more variation in our tween? What if perhaps we wanted to bunch a few of our curves up to the top and have kind of a more spaced out approach down the bottom? We could easily do that by manipulating the numbers coming out of range. Because they're set between 0 and 1, it's really easy for us to use something called the graph mapper in Grasshopper. So go and create a grab mapper, sorry, a graph mapper component and drop that on the canvas. Um, and I'm going to right click and change the graph type to a bezier type, just like this. So I'll go and um, plug my range into there. And then I'll plug uh, the output from that graph mapper into the factor. And what this will do is it'll enable us to be able to skew these range outputs. So if I go and drag this, you'll see I'm able to bunch some of those curves up to the top here. Similarly, if I go and drag these ones. So we can get quite a large skewing effect just by easily manipulating that graph mapper. I want to show you that it, like the problem that um, kind of comes up when we try and do that with the tween consecutive curve. So I'll plug that into here and we'll preview that off and we'll preview this guy back on. And what you'll see is it bunches basically towards one curve, then kind of spreads out to the middle and then bunches back again uh, when we're doing this tween consecutive curves. And that's once again because what the tween consecutive curves is trying to do is it's trying to create 30 in between all of these outcomes. Um, so it's going to basically do this, you know, tweening for one double set of curves and then tweening for the next double set of curves, which doesn't really give us a very nice kind of tweening effect between all of the curves. So what if we wanted to do a more gradual tween all the way through all of these curves? In that case, we'd want to use the tween through curves component. So let's put that guy in here. We'll plug our curves in and we'll plug our factors in. I'm going to preview this off here. Uh, and then you'll see, rather than tweening from this guy to that guy, then uh, the middle one to the top one, we're actually getting a gradual tween through the entire thing. And we can actually uh, manipulate this a bit further to get like more of a curved tween in between these things. Uh, I'm going to create a number slider that's between 0 and 3, and we're going to experiment with the interpolation type. So we've got a base type of 0, but we can easily um, change that so we get more of a, you know, smooth curvature between these tweened objects, which, you know, enables us to create a much kind of uh, more graded approach with this tweening objects. We could increase our range so we get a little bit more of a complex outcome. And that gives you a bit of an understanding as how you kind of would go about creating the basic tweening uh, with curves in Pufferfish. So I might group these guys and we'll label that tween curves. And then the last little experiment I want to do is I want to just try and apply this to, you know, some kind of um, problem or task that you might face somewhere in the real world. So these um, tweened geometries to me uh, start to look a little bit like 3D printing paths. So what I want us to do now is try and simulate how we might apply this to uh, some 3D printing paths. So I'm actually going to, um, well, we'll start again. I'll create a base curve component, and I'll go and re reference in multiple curves. So I'll go this guy, 
this guy and this guy. Hit return. I might preview this off for now. And I'm going to create a um, tween through curves component here. Put that guy in there. And we'll create another range. We'll create 0, 50, 100. So we've got some nice steps in between. Oops, put that into steps. Plug that range into factor, and um, I might copy this number slider actually here so we can get that nice interpolation going through our curves just like that. In fact, let's get a graph mapper on so we get um, a slightly graded effect. Just like that. Looking good. So when um, a 3D printer is operating, generally what will happen is the 3D printer will go around a layer complete its loop and then it'll jump up to the next layer and go around again and then jump up to the next layer and so on and so forth. So the way that we could go about doing that is basically uh, we could go and divide these curves into a certain number of points. I'm actually going to make it about 200 points. We could go a bit bigger so I'll just make that number slider have a range of up to a thousand. Something like this. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to cull um, at an index. And the indices that I want to cull, I'm going to do a bit of a list, so I'll just create a panel, is number one, zero, and number one. And I'll just change that to multi-line data here and plug that guy into indices. And that's basically going to get rid of uh, a couple of these points here. We could add, you know, 0, 1, 2 to get rid of an extra one. In fact, maybe we do just because we're not getting rid of too many here. And that gives us a new set of points. And basically the order of our list right now is we have all of these points on one branch of our data tree. Then the next branch is the second layer here and so on and so forth. So if we go and flatten this list, we've now got a flat list of points that looks like this, something with gaps in it. And we could easily just go and create a polyline that would represent our 3D printing toolpath. And you'll see what happens now, if I preview off our tween, is that, I might actually also just hide our geometries, is that our toolpath, preview that off too, jumps up um, along this curve. When you're creating 3D printed geometry, sometimes what's really helpful is the ability to actually control where this jump occurs. You want to control where your seam line is. And in Pufferfish, there's a really great uh, tool that allows us to um, realign where the seam is for any curves in our geometry. So basically, when you ever have a closed curve in Rhino, it has something called a seam, which is its starting point. Um, which basically is sitting here in all of our geometries. So we're going to go and try and adjust this. And we're going to do this by using a tool in Pufferfish called Curve Align, um, oh sorry, Curve Align Curve Seams. Uh, it's down here, Curve Align Curve Seams. So we're basically going to align the seams of our tween geometry to a curve that we're going to draw. So we'll put these curves in here, like that. And then I'm going to reference a new curve into here. And I'm actually just going to draw a line straight up like that, that's taller or bigger than my 3D printed geometry. And I'm going to go set one curve. And we'll apply that in as our guide. And you'll see what it does straight away is it gives us a collection of points as to where our seam is going to be reiterated. So if I move this kind of closer to our geometry, it gives me the opportunity to kind of control exactly where that seam is going to be. And if I go and reference that in now, that jump that we're programming in over here is actually occurring wherever um, I'm manipulating these seam lines. So I could go and move this over here perhaps. Uh, we get a bit of an error in where I've put it because I haven't put it in the greatest position. But you could also start to rebuild that curve, uh, you know, give it five control points and really start to manipulate that geometry so we get a really nice seam line. I'll prove that on for a second so we can see exactly where it is. Oops. We'll move this guy here like that. And you just want to get like a nice neat seam line if you're ever using 3D printing technology like that. But it's a good little tool that's available in Pufferfish that makes that seam line manipulation a lot easier than um, having to write your own custom seam generating algorithm in Grasshopper.
So it's easy to have a little play around until you get something that you're kind of happy with. I'll just move that one more. There we go. Looks good. So we'll group that guy, and I'll just call it 3D Printing Logic. 